I'm going to show you how to put together this puzzle sculpture, which I've designed, and I call a small ball of fire. The reason I call it that is it's fiery looking, and it is based on this shape, which is the small stellated dodecahedron. So the first thing I want to do is explain this shape to you. This is called the small stellated dodecahedron because it is the first stellation of the dodecahedron, this shape. This is one of the five platonic or regular solids. It's a regular solid because it, all its faces are the same regular polygon. In this case, it's a pentagon. And at every vertex, you have the same number of polygons coming together. In this case, you have three pentagons coming together at each vertex. There are 12 pentagons, and now you'll see that that corresponds to the 12 pieces of the puzzle. Now, this, this shape, the small stellated dodecahedron, it's called the small stellation because it's the first stellation. And the process for stellating is we take each of the faces of the dodecahedron, or whatever poly polyhedron we're working with, and we extend those planes, the planes that the faces lie in, until they intersect. And so with this dodecahedron, if you extend these faces here, all of them, extend them all up until they intersect, what you're going to end up with is a pentagon-based pyramid that lies above this pentagon. And if you do the same thing all around the entire dodecahedron, above each pentagon, again, you'll get one of these pentagon-based pyramids. And so you get these, these pieces coming out, which are also sometimes called stellations. So that's how the small stellated dodecahedron is formed from the dodecahedron. So this is our basic underlying polyhedra. And you can see, if you look at the finished puzzle, first off, these pieces from the stellation lie in the same plane, plane and they form a five-pointed star, or a pentagram. And that's one of the important features of this solid that allows us to design this sculpture. So you can see that this pentagram corresponds to one of these pieces. This piece lies in a plane. And basically, these pieces are just an abstraction of that pentagram. OK, let me now show you how to put two pieces together before we put the entire puzzle together. So here's your kit. Pull out your pieces. What you have are 12 pieces. You have three red three green, three yellow, and three orange. And then you've got directions, and these directions include all the diagrams that I'm going to use to put this together. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to put two pieces together. Um, I'm going to start with a green piece. Now something that's important is whenever you put, two pieces, put the pieces together, they all have to face in the same direction meaning that the pieces have to, these flame pieces have to point either to the right or to the left. It doesn't matter which way, but you have to be consistent with the whole puzzle. So I'm going to do it with all the pieces forming, uh, shooting off to the right or curling clockwise. So I'm going to take my green piece and I'm going to take an orange piece. They're both facing to the right the same way. And the way they'll go together is we'll take these sort of necks that are in the middle here, and then the two necks will kind of come and wrap around each other, and then I'll have at the top here, this notch will form into, well, they split into the notch at the top there, and at the bottom, this notch will slide onto that notch there. And every two pieces will go together in the same way. So if I want to add in another piece, I'm going to add a yellow piece over here. Again, it has to fall, go in the same direction, so again to the right or clockwise. But I'm going to put this yellow piece onto this orange piece. So again, their necks wrap around. And then at the top here, the slot goes onto this slot, and this slot goes onto this slot. But don't put any other slots together yet. Don't attach these two pieces yet. OK, so there I've attached three pieces, and it would continue on in the same way. And every time you attach pieces, they have to attach at the top and the bottom and have the two pieces in the middle, these two flames in the middle, will go past each other. Now, you'll notice that this is a very colorful puzzle, and it is, in fact, what we call properly colored because you never have two pieces of the same color attached to each other. 
And it's actually kind of hard to do that if you just try to put the pieces together um, without some sort of plan ahead of time, it's going to be rather hard to make it all work out properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called a planar graph to work out the coloring ahead of time. So we're going to use this graph, and this graph is in fact the planar graph for the dodecahedron. What we've done is essentially it's a way of drawing a three-dimensional figure or representing a three-dimensional figure in two dimensions. What we've done is we've distorted it by sort of pulling this bottom, this back pentagon out as far as we can and then flattening the whole thing down. So this pentagon in the middle here corresponds to this face. And then around this face you'll see that there are five pentagons and those are represented on the planar graph by these five pentagons. They're a little bit distorted but the distortion occurs because the thing of the whole thing is being rubber and we've pulled it all open. So those are those five pentagons. And then around the back, there are five more pentagons, which are these. These are pentagons, but they're just really distorted. One, two, three, four, five sides. And then finally, there's the face in the back. And the face in the back is represented by this space around the drawing, because we've pulled this all the way open so that this last pentagon is sort of turned inside out. Then what I've done is I've done a proper coloring of the faces on the graph. And that's something you can try to do on your own. But what you want to do is, is color the faces so that using as few colors as possible, you never have two adjacent faces colored the same color. And if you play around with it, you'll see that the minimum number of colors that will work are four. So what I've got here is a proper coloring of all the faces, including the face from the back, which is represented by this space. And uh, the minimum number of colors I can use is, is four. And that's why we have four colors for our pieces. Okay, so this is going to be my guide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the puzzle together, essentially constructing each of these points or pyramids one at a time. And so the first pyramid I'm going to construct is this one represented here by this blue arrow.